All right, this is the exact strategy I used to go from working 12 hours a day at DoorDash to making about $10,000 the first 10 days I actually used this routine. Now I make about $2,800 per day, something like that. I'm gonna show you what all this means, how to actually do it, the mindset behind it, and blah, blah, blah. Cool? I'm gonna call this the client extraction routine. This is what I do. I'm not gonna say it's gonna work the best for you, but I'm just gonna show you what worked the best for me. I don't know if it's gonna work for you, but again, this is what worked best for me, okay? Uh, you can't have a positive expectancy without having a reason. What that means is, you know those people that talk about the law of attraction or talk about uh, think and grow rich, right? If I just think about it, if I just visualize whatever, it's gonna come to me, right? You can't have that. I can't just visualize and not actually take action towards the goal. And so we have to visualize or know what we want, plus take action towards the goal. We have to do both. And that's why this routine is here to help you uh, know what actions to actually take, or at least what actions I would take every day. And that actually helped me get to where I am today, okay? So we'll go into first the mindset behind the routine as to why I do this routine this way and how, what you should be doing. Every day I try to first try to get money in the door. And so before I would do anything else, I would start with this routine. I would start with the uh, some of the strategies I'm about to show you. But uh, I see a lot of people where this is like not the main priority. We got to focus on clients first or I have to make sure the clients are happy. I have to make sure I set up these campaigns. All that crap is not mind numbing tasks, okay? Most of the client stuff I have to do is like, okay, check the campaign, make sure it's working. If it's not working, okay, just change it a little bit. That's it, right? Let's just do that at the end of the day because I already know how to do that. I've done that a thousand times. So I can do that in my sleep, literally. And so I'll just do that at the end of the day. I don't really care about that. Let me just make sure I get money because I am top priority number one. Let me get clients in the door myself first before I help my clients, right? And again, I'm still gonna help my clients. My clients are still gonna be very happy with the service I deliver, but those are mind-numbing tasks that I can just do later in the day. My mind is freshest in the morning. I have the most willpower in the morning. Let's use that to my advantage and get clients in the morning, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, and then what I also like to do, I try to plan out my entire week the week ahead, and so I know what I'm gonna do every single day for the next week, but also, if you don't wanna do that, you don't know what to do, at least plan tomorrow today. If you can't plan tomorrow today, you're, if by the time tomorrow comes, you're like, oh, what do I do today, right? So don't do that. Plan tomorrow today, know exactly what you're gonna do. What else I also like to do, I have my routine, plus I usually do, let me write down six priorities. This, These six things I'm about to do, nothing can stop me or getting in my way from me doing these six things. So. This is what Charles Schwab did. I kind of got it from that. And his company is worth $147 billion now. And so I'll have the routine. Well, yeah, well, my calls I gotta do, but plus on top of that, I've got six things I need to make sure I get these things done uh, tomorrow, right? So keep that in mind. All right, lead with certainty, full belief in yourself. I'm not gonna get too much into this. It's not like some cringy uh, thing, but if I know for a fact I'm, I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I'm gonna have 10 toes, the sun will be up. I have never really had to believe. I never really had to, I believe it so much that I don't have to think about it, right? I don't have to have faith that I'm going to have 10 toes tomorrow, right? I kind of just know that's going to happen or that I have 10 toes right now. I don't have to look and check. I don't know if you have 10 toes, but at least I do. And so I try to look at it as how do I, how, how do I become 100% certain that this is going to happen uh, that I am going to crush these goals. And if you don't think you're gonna crush the goal, at least maybe we need to change the goal. Maybe, maybe make it a little easier to accomplish so I know for a fact this is going to happen, right? And so when I did this, the, when I, the first week I did this and I made the $10,000, I literally just said to myself, look, I'm going to stop everything. I'm gonna stop doing DoorDash. I'm gonna delete the app and I'm gonna make $5,000 this week. And there's nothing that can stop me from making $5,000 this week. That's how I thought to myself. And then, and I was like, uh, that was the goal and I actually accomplished the goal that week. And I don't really know, it was like, obviously I'm gonna show you the routine, but it was really just a matter of, I fully believe this, that there's nothing that, uh, there's not a doubt in my mind I'm actually going to achieve this, right? So it's different from having a goal and then having faith versus actually believing it. So try to actually believe it wholeheartedly. This is Elon Musk saying, in retrospect, it was inevitable, which is uh, what he said after he was announced to be the richest man in the world, surpassing Jeff Bezos. Pretty funny. All right, be humble, but elevate your confidence. Sometimes I will just, why don't we do everything we possibly can to feel the best so that we portray that in everything that we possibly do, right? I've got this fake Rolex right here. Look at this fake Rolex, it's pretty cool. It's a Hulk green Submariner. Please focus on the Rolex. Jeez, okay, here we go. <laughs> focus on my face again, all right. Uh, actually, I was watching the Mike Tyson fight and then they had, uh, one of the trainers had this exact Rolex, it was pretty funny. But fake Rolex, the reason it's, it was a more expensive fake Rolex, it was like 500 bucks. 
The reason I sometimes wear this is because it's like even I don't I don't care about having a real Rolex, but if I can wear this watch and if I you know when you get out of the gym you know you smell kind of weird or like you ever worked at a McDonald's or you work at a fast food restaurant and you know you're working all day and you know you smell bad like I just need a shower I can't <laughs> I can't go talking to girls I can't uh, go to another job interview and in these clothes right I can't just you know so I can't go apply for a loan uh, in this condition you know so. I want to make sure I feel confident and the, you can elevate your confidence by just taking this freaking shower and uh, getting, uh, putting on nice clothes and wearing a fake watch uh, just so you feel, I know that even though I don't, I'm not sticking my nose up, I'm not saying I'm better than you, but at least I feel a little more confident so I can go into every situation being the best version of myself that I can possibly be. Cool? Watch the money. I would just try to track as many KPIs as possible and then KPIs is just key performance indicators. Uh, basically, tracking what we can to make sure that we know we're on our goal to whatever the goal is, which we'll talk about in a second. And so some of the KPIs I track is like simple things. How many appointments did we book today? How many people did we close? How much money did we actually make? But the more KPIs you try to track or the more granular you get into it, the more money you will make. I was talking to somebody one day and he was making 100 times more than I was. I was making maybe 10, 15K a month at the time. He was making a million dollars a month. And he said, for every 20 people that join my Facebook group, I make $8,000. I was like, how do you even know that? I didn't even know that was something you could track. And so I see it as if, if he knows from, from how many people join the group to how many people actually close, that's actually pretty insane. And so I need to get as far deep into it as I possibly can and try to track as many metrics as I can. Now start with the basics, like I said, just how many appointments did I book today? But then we go more granular as we go along and we'll make more money as we do that. And also we just want, uh, with these metrics, we want to track them because uh, almost this is something that Cody Sanchez says, but it was like a money is a mistress. If you stop paying attention to it, then it'll find someone else uh, to pay attention to it. Right. It'll, it'll go off to somebody else. Right. I'm, I'm sure you've opened your bank account one day and you're like, Ooh, I don't know how much is going to be in there. And then you look at it and you're like, Ooh, so obviously if we checked every day, we would know exactly where it's going to be. And so the more that we track these things, and it doesn't have to just be the money, but also uh, your closing percentage or how many calls you book today. If we know exactly, like if I know I, I booked zero calls today, I know tomorrow I need to fix this. I, there's no reason I should have booked zero calls today. I should have booked at least something. And so I know I need to fix it rather than uh, going a week later, like, oh, I only booked three calls this week, right? And then I, I'm, it's a lag measure. What, lag measure, what a lag measure is, is uh, we look back at the measure and we say, what happened, right? Rather than uh, a lead measure, which is being in the moment and okay, we, we want to book 50 calls this week and this is Monday, I booked zero calls. What do I need to do tomorrow to make sure I get to my goal, right? That's a lead measure. We want to know what the goal is ahead of time and track accordingly during rather than looking back and tracking afterwards, you know? So keep that in mind. Cool, clear goal know exactly what we want. What I've been studying, I've been studying a lot of just watching every, anything that Mr. Beast has like made in terms of like podcasts and something, just studying. I'm trying to make the best YouTube videos I possibly can, but uh, studying him. Also, I st talked to Jack Neal recently. What I've seen is that they just have a clear objective of this is exactly what I want. I know I, I want to have the most subscribed YouTube channel and I want to make the best videos on the planet. I talked to Jack Neal recently. He was in my video. Uh, I asked Beverly Hills millionaires, how they made their money, something like that. It was a really good video. Nobody watched it. Please go watch the video if you haven't. It was so good. He said his goal is to become the number one podcast. And that's his main goal right now. It kind of sounds delusional, right? Just trying to be number one podcaster in the world. Yeah. Number one podcast in the world. There's so many other huge podcasts, right? And yet he's had every single big name you could mention on his, other than like Elon Musk, right? He's had Andrew Tate, Candace Owens, uh, the other red pill dude, I forget his name. And a ton of people, right? And almost, or Ty Lopez and all that jazz, right? And it was a result of him just setting the goal. I am going to have the number one biggest podcast in the world. And then how do I do everything I possibly can to get to that goal? And so I want to try to cut yourself short. There's nothing extraordinary about Jack Neal or nothing extraordinary about Mr. Beast because they were, they were just hyper obsessed. That's what I realized too. Hyper obsessed. I knew exactly what they wanted and uh, it was very simple. And so that's why I've seen a lot with like young entrepreneurs that were very successful really quickly. And obviously, Mr. it wasn't quick. It was like, it took 10 years before he uh, got really, really big. And uh, Jack Neal, obviously he was, he's been doing a lot of other stuff over the past 
uh, five or six years, and he's that's his new goal now. And obviously, he's not the biggest podcast, but he's been able to have huge names on. He's been able to make huge strides in a very short amount of time with this clear, concise goal. Okay, so just try to keep in mind. Uh, there's nothing different between them and you. They just were hyper obsessed and worked really hard at it, and it was clear and clean and concise. Cool. All right, here we go. The routine. Sorry for blabbering on for so long. We'll get right into it. This is exactly what I did. Again, I'm gonna say this. It was what's worked. What? <laughs> it worked best for me. I'm not gonna say it's gonna work best for you. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my own words. Okay. First, I would start with Facebook automation outreach. This is what I would do every morning. I would go here. Let's just go to. I would go to a Facebook group of, let's say I'm targeting videographers, drones, videographers, and photographers. I click on this Facebook automation tool, which would automate sending out messages on Facebook, and I click start. And that's literally all I would do. And now it's going, right? That's step number one. Now, a few tips for this. I use a tool called Leadbook. There's a way to set it up. I've got uh, some videos on how to set this up and whatever. And I usually also help you set it up if need be. And uh, you wanna have the right message in here and you don't want to, I've got a video on all the different scripts that I use in the past and what works well and what doesn't work. And so you can watch that as well. And you want to let those run. I usually also go into a couple different groups every couple of days, right? So I'll go into, let's say I have five different groups I rotate into every day. And so I'm not just targeting this one Facebook group here because maybe it's not the best quality. And obviously I want to know that by sending out messages to them, but also other groups, maybe another group will get higher quality people. Also what I try to do is I try not to target directly targeting the keywords. So you can look up plumber groups, uh, or videographer groups, but also videographers or photographers. They're also in Facebook groups about just cameras. And so what if I looked up Sony buy, sell trade, right? Which is Sony cameras, Sony camera, you know, buy. And so photographers and videographers, they're going to be in this group, but it doesn't specifically call out to the audience, which means not a lot of people are going to know about this strategy. So for example, also if there's a certain software that your audience uses, let's say we're targeting staffing agencies and there's a certain software that staffing agencies use. I don't know what software they use, but if you just do a little market research and you find that out, then I'm sure you can figure it out pretty quickly, you know, and you can actually find higher quality groups within those. Cool. So that's what I do first. Just turn it on and let it run. I'll usually also have like 10 responses. Usually over the course of the night, I'll like go to sleep and I'll wake up the next morning. There's like 10, <laughs> 10 responses of people that were like, yes, I'm interested. How does it work? Now, how can you help me? Stuff like that. And so I'll just go in here and I'll look at, Hey Carson, I wanted to know more about how much you charge per strategy session. Okay, cool. Right now I have a lead right here just from a message I sent a while ago. This person, what's this about? All right. And I just go through and I can respond back and forth to any of my messages that were interested. Cool. All right. The next thing I do, very simple, very easy. I would just do the LinkedIn automation and I check that. So LinkedIn automation is very easy to set up. I've got a, a video on YouTube on how to do this as well. And I just use WeConnect just because it's pretty cheap. It also has, it's 50 bucks a month, but it has a, a very good, there's a lot of granular things I like that it can do, like uh, certain campaigns that it can do. And so you can automate all your outreach through LinkedIn. So what I'll do is I'll, I, I, usually you can set it up and it'll send for like two weeks. With Facebook, we have to click play on this every day. It's like a Chrome extension. We have to click play and it'll start going. But with this one, we can just click play and it'll go for like two weeks. So we don't have to really check on it every single day, the automation part of it, but we can check on LinkedIn every day. And so this will take only, let's say five minutes of just checking out messages. Right now I have a whole bunch of messages I need to get back to. But uh, I've got all these, and so I can just respond back and forth. Hey, how does it work, right? Or someone says, hey, I'm interested. Uh, how much do you charge, right? And there's certain ways of responding back and forth to them. I usually also use this tool called Clutch, KL something, <laughs> Clutch. And I, I scroll through and like people ask, what's the cost? And, I, and so I have this copy and paste template of what the cost is. I want the free course. Here's the free course uh, and just some formulas, just some random things. Here's a, what do you do? Yeah, so I'll say, if someone asks, what do I do? I automate email, SMS, LinkedIn, and Facebook outreach to your target audience. Uh, it'll automate the messages until they respond. And then I'll ask a qualifying question. Who do you target mainly? So I have a whole script that I use. I have a whole video on how to do that as well, what script I use. Cool. Then I'll start an email SMS campaign. I'll show you an example, but uh, I usually all, like the LinkedIn strategy. I'll have it running already, and usually I just have to check on it every day. Now, this can either take 30 seconds or it can take... Um, two hours to respond back and forth to messages because obviously I can get a ton of responses from an email and SMS campaign if you do it the right way. So I'll, let me see if I can show you an example here. I did a campaign the other day of just like reaching out to people, seeing if they want to sell their business, just a random example, right? And so I said, hey, just want to see if you're open to selling. Uh, this one guy said, oh, sorry, I sold my three years ago. Uh, this one, hey, just want to see if you're open to selling your business. Can we chat? Uh, it's early next week. Sure, right? And so the automated messages automatically went out to them. So it's super easy 
what I'll do is I'll just scrape a list. I have these huge databases. This is a part of my group, but I've got these huge databases of uh, 30 million contacts here of owners and founders and CEOs. So let's just say I want to reach out to any company in Sacramento, California, and I want to see if they're open to selling their business. So I have owner, founder, CEO, president. They're in Sacramento, California, and they have a mobile phone number. We have 1,500 people total. I can just click file, and I download, and I save that as a CSV. And then I will just uh, upload it to my software here and uh, upload it to the contacts tab. And then I'll just start an automation and I'll automatically start sending out these texts to these people. And then I just have to respond back and forth accordingly. Now there's a very specific way of doing SMS. You do not want to send a crappy message. You don't want to send a message that um, people are going to mark you as spam. You can get your phone number blocked really quickly by doing that. And so you have to be really careful about what you say. There's certain things like you, you don't want to say, Hey, I'll give you $500 if you just respond, right? Cause people think, Oh, that's probably a scam. And then they say, no, stop, uh, unsubscribe, whatever. And so that's, you don't want to do those things. You also don't want to do something like reply. Yes. If you're interested, reply. No, if you're not like, don't never do that. Right. Cause that automatically, we want to look like we're sounding like a real person. Whenever we're automating something, always sound real before you automate it. Right. And so that's one strategy. You can also, I do email very differently too. So I'll use a strategy I'll have. I've got all these databases. I can just download this and I get a whole bunch of emails as well. And so let's just say I want owners and founders and CEOs throughout Sacramento, California. I've got 21,000 people that have an email here. All right. So I can just download all these, verify the emails, set up an email campaign. There's things that people do where they'll set up like an instantly campaign and they have all these different email accounts. I don't do any of that crap. That's super annoying. It takes forever to set up. I'll show you what I do. Well, I have a video of like how to actually send a thousand uh, emails in one day, right? And you can use email sending providers, ESPs. And basically you can use Go High Level, you can use Active Campaign or MailChimp, and you can just use their server and just send out thousands of email from their server. Here's an example of something I did a couple months ago in August, I believe I sent this out. And this was, I sent out a thousand emails. I got 19 responses, which is a 1.9% response rate, about a 2% response rate, which is a little above industry average. And every single one of these is a positive reply. See this, okay, let me try to zoom in here. No, I can't zoom in that much, I guess. We said, sure. Yeah, man. Sure. Share more details. Interested. How would it work? Carson, curious. Sure. Send more details. Hey, Carson. Uh, yes, I'm open to a partnership. Hey, yes, sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Carson. Would love to know more. Sure. Hello, Carson. Sorry, I missed this. Sure. <laughs> hey, Carson. Circling back, right? All these people interested. No negative replies <laughs> from this script, from this uh, outreach strategy using, and I, I think this example, I just use active campaign. You don't have to use active campaign. I just use it as an example for the video I was making, uh, but a super easy it takes like uh, maybe an hour to set that up. And then you can just do that every day. Right. And so we don't have to wait two weeks for something to warm up. We don't have to create a hundred email accounts and all that jazz. I hate that crap. Okay. All right. So I'll just check my email, my SMS campaigns, see if I need to respond back and forth to anybody and go from there. Awesome. All right. Now, regardless of wherever you are in business, you have to start positioning yourself as an expert. So if you're just starting out, I will show you how to position yourself as an expert, even though you have no testimonials, no results, whatever. You just have to start doing that somewhere, right? So we need to know, we need to show people that we're an authority. Cause even if we're just doing cold outreach people, people will click on your Facebook profile just to see if they you're legit, right? So on my Facebook profile, if, if I reach out and I say, Hey, I'll get you 120 appointments a month or 40 appointments a month, right? You're going to, okay, let me just check out to see if this guy's real getting 120 qualified appointments a month. No autopilot on autopilot, no retainer, no setters, no paid ads. Okay. That aligns uh, straight with the message. I just sent him build a 30 K business in 30 days using SMS. Mm, interesting. Okay. This guy has really good results. Uh, I have this video on how to do, how to get, uh, it's, what is it called? Something, I don't know how to scrape leads, how to scrape anyone's phone number. Right. Uh, I booked 11 appointments yesterday. Should I make a video of sales calls on the ocean? All this is just to one provide value to you. Look, this provides value. Look, I'm an expert. I know what I'm talking about. I know how to scrape anyone's phone number for free. I know how to start a 30 K SMA business uh, in 30 days just by using SMS. I know how to book 11 appointments a day. And here's me at the beach, right? Everything is just a show. Look, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm an expert. You should listen to me. Look, here's me on a helicopter flying over a city. Uh, I were after working with a thousand clients. Here's what I learned. Okay. This guy worked with a thousand clients. That's crazy, right? which is true. All this is true, but uh, we always want to position ourselves as an expert because again, wherever, whatever platform we're, at, we're reaching out on, people will look you up. Even if it's just on email, people will, I've had people, plenty of people respond back and say, okay, I just Googled you. I think you're legit. Let's hop on a call. Right. And this was before I had an audience or had like a YouTube channel or anything. All I, I just had maybe like three YouTube videos, or I just had my Facebook page and my LinkedIn page. And people will look at my LinkedIn page after Googling my name. And they would see just like three or four posts that I posted. I only post like four times on LinkedIn, but they're all just to make me look like I know what I'm talking about, you know? So 
Keep that in mind. You always want to post. And so here's what I do in terms of the posting strategy as a part of my daily routine. I will do easy posts first. So I will try to, at the beginning of the week, so I did this like yesterday on Sundays. This is a Monday currently. I'm going to try to show my calendar here. So my priorities yesterday, like again, this is like six things. Uh, finish YouTube scripts, do 80 pull-ups, blah, 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 blah. Uh, three Facebook posts and three scheduled and then uh, whatever, right? So I was trying to, and I have it up here of what I need to post. So I have a, I'll, I'll plan out at the beginning of the day, like, let me just, I'll post a reel, uh, some guy's testimonial. And I'll also like, so th this is just a screenshot. So if I open this up, then I will take a screenshot of somebody saying, hey, I just closed this commercial cleaner for a thousand bucks a month and $200 per call, right? So that's a screenshot and we can just download that and I can just upload it to, and I just did that on Instagram today. I just posted that. And then I have a reel that I already made yesterday that I want to post and a Facebook post I want to put out. And then uh, this guy has, uh, this was a, another, I just have to download that photo. Just a testimonial, testimonial, and then a video I want to post, whatever, right? And so I just try to plan that out the week ahead, right? That's what I usually do. But we just do easy posts. The easy posts are things that I want to try to make you, maybe not jealous, but I want to try to make you feel like you're missing out on something. When I showed you this, right? All these, sure, yeah, how does it work? Yeah, let's work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, don't you want to think, don't you think of what the heck is in the script? <laughs> how is he doing that? What is he doing to get all these responses? And then how does he actually even set that up, right? That's the first thing you think. And then I say, well, you can book a call with me and I'll show you exactly how to do that. And so that's the whole, the pitch, right? Where we go from, here's this crazy end result. Don't you want this end result? Don't, didn't you want something like that? You want to get a ton of appointments every day. You want to get 20 replies, people desperately interested in your service every single day. And it almost takes no effort to set up. Wouldn't you want that, right? And so here's the result of this client who just closed the deal very easily. And he had on a 15 minute call, he was able to close it. Here's a video of uh, me setting up this system. And it's very easy to do, right? Here's a video of this guy overflowing with appointments. And this was like a video, a testimony. So anytime someone says something nice about me, I always try to put it down somewhere. So I'll show you an example here. I have it in my, I just have a, a folder on my computer. I just call it results. I just have a ton of different results. And this is not all of them, but I put them in a different place now. But this is like older testimonials. I'll get my random dad here. Okay. Uh, so like, here's a full calendar. One week we had a full calendar. Here's this guy saying, hey, mate, your course is amazing, by the way. Let's see. Everything you do, every way you do it is amazing. <laughs> I can generate as many appointments as I need for myself. Thank you so much. Awesome. Great. Cool. Here's another one. Harry Bolton, let's just see. Uh, testimonial. So far, we made 6K, 6K from Karsten's course with a K. That's funny. First two weeks, formally outreaching. Awesome. Great. $6,000 in two weeks. That's, so I just, anytime someone says something nice, I put it down somewhere. And here's an example, another one, where uh, this guy, <laughs> he just posted a comment somewhere, random, and he tagged me in the comment. He said, Karsten Fox is a genius, in my opinion. He knows how to book appointments with automation better than anyone else I've ever seen. Facts. Right. And I just screenshot everything. Anytime someone says something nice, I can use this to my, this is an asset for me. I can use this to my advantage to I get more clients for myself. Right. So if someone says, do you have any results? I, yeah. Look at all these results. Right. And then I can just keep posting them so that when somebody looks me up, right. Or they just click on my link, Facebook profile. Does this guy really know what I'm talking about? And then they look at my store and they say, look, at, there's a result every single day. There's a new result, new result. So keep that in mind. Always do that. So those, those are simple, easy posts that you can do. And then the fifth thing I try to do is find outliers. I got this from Jack Neal, also Mr. Beast, but Jack said in my Beverly Hills video that no one watched, he said, look to those who are winning right now and they're usually not winning. So for example, you see someone with 10,000 followers, they get a 10 million view video. That's the person to look at. It's not the person that averages 3 million views. You don't look at their 3 million view videos because that's not an outlier, right? So look at what's successful right now so you can build your business and find uh, the right niche. But just don't look at those that are already winning because they've built brands. They're winning for a different reason. So what I try to do is I just try to find outlier content and I try to reproduce that on my own. What outlier content is, right, is let's say someone only has 10,000 subscribers and it's got a million views, then that's an outlier, right? So they usually only get 1,000 views and now they're getting a million views. So how do we recreate that? So what I try to do is you can do this on Facebook. So a really easy way to do this is actually the way that I've got my first couple clients is I saw someone post on a Facebook group. It had like 60 comments, people saying, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. I'm like, okay, people are desperate, in, desperately interested in this post. What is the post? It said, does anyone need help getting more appointments? And I was like, holy cow, why, why don't I just do that? So I copied that post, I po posted it myself. I just copied him directly 
and I got my first couple clients, I would not be in business today if I just didn't even see that post. That was that's crazy. I've made over a million dollars just from me seeing this post and then I copied it. So pretty interesting. All right. So don't be afraid to copy people. But here's an example. This is a tool called View Stats. This is actually Mr. Beast's tool that they just created. And it's for specifically trying to find outliers. So what this number is down here is an outlier score. So this is 11.6 times better than all the other videos on their channel or like the average on their channel. So the worst of Roblox 2022, right? 12, and this is just a random, I just look up Roblox. I've never uh, watched a Roblox video, but uh, here, so you have like some different uh, stats that you can do or some different filters. Uh, over 500,000 views. The channel has over 100,000 uh, subscribers and the outlier score is 10x their average, and it can go up to 50 to 1,000 times. This one's 73x, 75x, right? So what I'll do is I'll look at completely different industries, which is actually a really good idea. Just look at completely different industries that have nothing to do with what you do and try to apply that idea because if you go into a completely different industry, then nobody else in your industry is doing it, right? And so obviously you want to look at your industry, but also look at completely different ones. And so this one is, let's see, how you can steal Roblox accounts. You can now steal Roblox accounts, right? And it just says a button, steal Roblox accounts. And so you have to think, okay, how do I apply this to myself? So if I thought, what if I said, you can now steal clients, you can now steal appointments, you can now run Facebook ads for free. You know, I just try to brainstorm a little bit about what I can do. And I have this uh, thing I put down here. This is just my, what I call rice content. It's just all my ideas and I'll put them down. I'll bold the ones that I kind of like. This one had a, I found on here and it was real estate math, how to make a million dollars. So I thought SMA math, how to make a million dollars. Like, so I can use that as, uh, so you might see that in an upcoming video. If I look up something else that I have no clue about, makeup, just, I, I try to go completely off the wall. I've never watched any video about makeup. How, what can I learn though from this? And so this one performing really well, 50X, the normal average. Now, sometimes these, it's just like classic makeup. Sometimes these are just videos of, um, what are these? Sometimes they're ads. So this one kind of looks like an ad, but I don't think it is. It might just be some uh, regular. Easy natural makeup, that's well, pretty simple. 60X the views. Five makeup tips to look 10 years younger. Okay, how can I apply that? Five SMMA tips to make a million dollars. Five SMMA tips to get to 20K a month, right? Stop wasting your money on these makeup products. Let me click into this, and then I try to look at what are some different ideas here. So we have stop wasting your time, stop wasting your money, and then we have this, stop wasting money. Stop wasting time, stop wasting time. So it looks like stop wasting time is a pretty big one too. This is 48X, 43X, 1.8 million views. Let's click on this one. And I'm just trying to see, just as an example, uh, why is this an outlier? So stop wasting your time, six reasons to retire soon. Stop wasting time, stop wasting time, stop wasting your life, stop wasting your time. And so, okay, it looks like stop wasting your time is consistently an outperformer uh, on people's channels. So how would I implement this? And so I probably would want to watch this video. Something else you have to think about too, is that we want to make sure that we are uh, providing some of the same value because we don't want to just like make a video that is completely different value where I'm going to scroll down here. There was a video I saw earlier. Uh, okay. Look, grandpa does ASMR, do ASMR with me, sleep, no talking, whatever. And it's like uh, this grandpa doing ASMR, right? I want to, I mean, I guess I could do <laughs> grandpa does SMMA. Grandpa makes a, a drop shipping. Grandpa does drop shipping for the first time, whatever. That'd be kind of funny. But uh, I probably wouldn't try to copy this one directly because the value is probably that it's funny. And so if that's a completely different value than what I'm trying to provide, you have to think about that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Anyways. All right. Cool. So I'll find outliers and that's about it. And then now for the rest of the day, I will usually, I'll have like sales calls, whatever. And then so that's like the morning that I'll, what I'll usually do. I'll try to do some of those things, but then for the rest of the day, I'll usually just, how do I all uh, write scripts and then work on content. So obviously I created some ideas, but now I got to work on content. And so I'll try to spend the rest of my free time just working on how do I give to others? If you, I'm not going to read all this, but if you give something to someone else, 80, like I try to spend 80% of my free time, just how do I give to more people, even whether it just be time, money, my talent, or just creating content for other people. And so if I give more, somehow the debt has to be paid. If I gave you something, if you feel like you've gotten value out of this, somehow the debt has to be paid. Somehow you might just click the like button and that might you know, help me, right? You, you repaid your debt by clicking the like button or subscribing or watching two or three more of my videos, right? And because I gave so much value to you, hopefully you give me something back in some way. And usually it'll come in the form of money long-term, right? Some people usually have to watch like four different videos of you. They need to watch like seven different hours of you or uh, have four different touch points. Maybe have to text you and call you before you actually 
not close the deal with me, but in some way, you're going to give back to me in some way. Like maybe not really back to me, or obviously there's plenty of people that watch my videos and then don't ever uh, subscribe or like or whatever, right? But if I consistently give value, somehow the debt has to be repaid. So I would think of it that way. I just try to uh, write out a script. I'll spend the day uh, trying to think about what is the title of this Facebook post I'm about to do or the, the script I'm gonna create and then uh, try to build out the script for that and then go from there. And again, I'll try to provide as much value as I can. Now, obviously that takes a little longer, creating these scripts and whatever, that takes longer than 21 minutes. But again, how much can I give? And then obviously the debt needs to be repaid back to me in some way. Cool. All right, I hope this helps you guys out. I hope it helps you get five to seven sales calls a day and I hope it helps you make about $2,800 a day. If you want a system to consistently get 120 sales calls per month and you want me to help you with that, you can book a call with me below. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.